lapping of column reinforcement what is a lap in a column reinforcement we have to lap the reinforcement in a column special consideration in the reinforcement lapping in the columns all those and much more will be discussed today i am prasad from structural guide please subscribe our youtube channel you may get the notification on new videos what is a lap and what is a lap length the length required to transfer the stress in the rebar to another now we provide laps because we can't continue the reinforcement bars throughout the structure there are limitations in the length depending on the limited length we have to have a lap other than that when we need to reduce the bar diameter that is larger bar to smaller bar diameter in such cases we need to have a laps when we do the lapping we always consider the small bar diameter for calculation of the lap length so when you do the laps in addition we have to consider the uh, minimum reinforcement requirements then maximum reinforcement requirement and the special detailing rules in the reinforcement lapping lapping zone and why we need to select lapping zone as you can see in this figure now the bending moment variation is shown in this black color this is the bending moment diagram so the bending moment is high at the support this is the beam and uh, this uh, this this is the column so beam and column is there so bending moment is high bending moment is high at the support so it's common practice mostly we provide lap close to the close to the beam joint that is about the beam we provide the lap we lap here that is because it is easy to hold the reinforcement bar here if you are going to lap somewhere there up there it is very difficult to hold the top bar this bar it's very difficult to hold therefore mostly people get used to do the lap close to the floor but is not good now in general in for normal structures you can lap the close to the floor but when you have a lateral load seismic loads then you shall avoid the lapping as much as possible at the floor level the best practice is to stagger the lap now you could do some certain amount of lapping at close to the floor other laps you could have it at the next level the best place is to have a lap is the mid sections where the bending moment is very small comparatively there also you may you may stagger the lap now you have a one lap here then another lap you stagger stagger like this so lap will be staggered that's the best practice you could uh, do you could follow in lapping the column reinforcements consideration of lap length when we do in doing the laps we consider the smaller bar diameter for the laps if we have a two bars at same diameter there is no issue but if you have a different bar diameters for example like 20 bar lapping with the 20 mm bar in that case you have to consider the you can you could consider the smaller bar that is 20 mm bar for lapping in generally we maintain the lap length around 50 times bar diameter here the bar diameter is the smaller bar diameter 50 is so you consider as a general value but this 50 you could be referred to the real relevant standard the relevant standard could have given this value crank length now as a general practice you have to maintain the crank length in the range of 1 is to 10 this could increase but you should not reduce the crank length because the reduction in the crank length increase the angle with that the stresses will be higher at the bends in addition you have to provide additional rebars at the crank as a general practice here as you can see here there is a one bar at the crank here you have one bar but in addition to that you could provide additional bars here and here at a spacing of 75 millimeters 
So with this, you may able to reduce the additional stress due develop due to the crime. In heavily congested reinforcement or heavily stress columns, you may follow this better because it allows to tie the reinforcement towards the inner core of the concrete. Reba shall be staggered when you lapping. Now, as a general practice, we lap the reinforcement at close to the floor as we discussed previously. But if you can stagger the laps, that will be better, especially when you have a slightly cloding effect. One bar could lap here like this, other bars you could lap here. So then you have a staggered lap. So you may have a better performance during cyclic loadings. Stirrups at cranks. As we discussed, we have to provide the stirrup at cranks and other areas we have to consider the provide this stuff as usual man. In addition, when reinforcement, many reinforcement are there in the sections, all the reinforcement bars should be restrained when the rest, the gap between the strain bar and the reinforcement that particular bar exceed the 150 millimeters if the for example gap between corner bar and the next inner bar is less than 150 for example if it is 100 millimeter you don't want to restrain that is you don't want to have a link but if it is 200 that bar need to be restrained then you have to provide the links for that that you have to consider when you're doing the details. Reba welding. Normally, reba welding is not allowed, though the TMT bars are weldable. That is because now the welding is depend on the skill of the labor or the welder. So if the welder is not that skilled and he will if he burn the reba, the reba properties will be changed and the reduction of the area will be there. So with that, the structural capacity will be reduced. In a reinforced, reinforced concrete structure, column is one of the important elements in the structure. Next to the foundation, column is the most important element because failure of column could lead to collapse of the structure. Therefore, we have to be careful when you're doing these kind of things. Instead of welding, you may use the mechanical couplers. Staggered mechanical couplers used instead of the welding and instead of the lapping. Laps increase the reinforcement conjunction. Therefore, we may use uh, uh, you may use the couplers to reduce the reinforcement conjunction in especially in the uh, re reinforced columns having higher reinforcement area. In addition, you have to keep in mind about the reinforcement percentage at the laps and the reinforcement percentage in the column sections. In the columns, you should maintain the minimum reinforcement area and the maximum reinforcement area. At laps also, you have to maintain the maximum reinforcement area. If you uh, exceed the maximum reinforcement area, there will be a high congestion in the reinforcement Therefore, you must follow the guideline specific values. Generally, at labs, the reinforcement area is maintained around 10% maximum from the cross sectional area. Therefore, you have to maintain those values during the construction. With that, we end the today's discussion. We discuss about the uh, column reinforcement and how do we provide the column reinforcement? We are to lap the column reinforcement. What are the detailing requirement we shall consider in column reinforcement lapping? We meet again for a new video. Thank you very much.